Hello and welcome back to Adventure 82. Currently we're in Vine Street. We're about to go around the corner uh, into Library Place. Um, reason for that is we're here to follow the history of Jersey's Library. Now in 1850 in the UK the first Library Act was passed that allowed public access to libraries. But 114 years before that, thanks to Philip Fall, we already had a public library. So, where was it? Because it clearly isn't, wasn't where it is now. That's what we're going to follow. We're going to follow the library because it has two previous locations and we're going to follow it to its new location. And the new location has a history all of its own. So let's get going. Right, so as you can see, we're currently in Library Place where it meets Broad Street. This whole area has a whole history of its so, own, but I couldn't do Library Place without mentioning the other historic building, which would have been this one. It's now Nat West, as you can see from the side, but it started life as the Jersey Bank, because Jersey had its own bank. We didn't always have the national banks we have over here now, because obviously it's where all the banks are now. So you've got Nat West here. You've got a purpose-built building there, which was owned by Midland Bank, if you're old enough to remember Midland Bank. And then the current building here, which is currently surrounded by scaffolding, is Barclays Bank. And over in the corner there, also surrounded by scaffolding, we have Lloyds Bank. But uh, we'll do all these separately uh, down here, Broad Street, on a separate video. Uh, since everybody liked the uh, bits about St. Helia video so much last time. But what we're interested in right now is down there with a red door. Right, so this is the first location and the original location of that library that existed 114 years before the UK original library pass was passed. It says here it was 1942 to 1886. Um, few things have changed the way libraries work since then though. When this library opened, the librarian had to take an oath that they would not allow any books to be removed from the library or they'd be fined. 40 francs don't ask me what that is in today's money but uh that's a lot of money i would imagine and uh the other interesting thing is to actually go into this library and look at the books not borrow them just look at them in the building you had to pay three shillings now obviously we're in a day where in a time where you go into the library now you can borrow books for free you don't have to pay to get in that's quite the difference there was no heating either, so while you were sitting in here, you were pretty cold. And that continued on until the next place. Now in 1886, they moved again. They didn't go far though. They went into part of the States building over there in the Royal Square. So now let's go have a look at over that. Right, so this is where in 1886, when they moved out from Library Place across the way there, this is where they moved to. This is given away by the sign at the top there that says Bibliothèque Publique 1886. Nice chandelier too, I have to say. Probably not gas anymore, which is what it would have been back in the day. This was an interesting one, this, uh, this library. It was at the time, it was also home to the treasurer of the States, who is no longer placed in here. I'm not sure where he is now, and I'm not actually sure what they do in here anymore. Uh, but I know it's the States, and it's, uh, it's definitely not public access. You have to go through a metal detector to make sure you don't have any weapons on you. So I don't know what they think you're going to do in there. But uh, this is where a lot of things change. This was a much grander affair. That was a very humble building. This was a very grand building. You can see about the granite, the gold uh, lettering, and this continued inside. It had a very ornate dome which had four columns in each corner and the corners had different famous uh, 
people for literature on them. So you had Shakespeare, who was um, obviously a very famous person. Um, and there was three others, which I'll put in the bottom, because there's one of them I can't pronounce and I don't want to get it wrong. So it'll be right somewhere around here. I'll put that in for you so you know exactly who they were for. Uh, they, did have an, they did have a law though against people going in there in their slippers. Um, because people kept going in there in their slippers because they found it cold in the granite building. Um, and so they solved this by supplying their own ones that didn't contaminate the floor when you went in. This was, wasn't until later on though, um, and I'll put the year in the bottom for you, where they got the real comfort here for the first time, where the library became heated. They actually put proper heating in the library. Um, central heating at that it would have been very primitive central heating I would imagine probably like water heating I'd imagine heated hot water probably pumped around something like that very basic but much better than freezing yourself to bits like you would have done there and when this first opened but it is a grand grand thing you can see where the two buildings meet as well so you can have the original states building here in the pink and you can see where this has been built onto the side of it, where the plain granite ends. So all this would have been a one-time library. It's a shame you can't go in and see it now. It would also be interesting to know uh, what happened to um, all the bookshelves. They did say, when I was doing research, they were, that some were preserved um, from the original one and then moved in here. What they, have, they don't mention what happened to them after they came, once they left here. And obviously the new library's got your more modern kind of metal shelving. So it would be interesting to know what happened to those original quite smart and posh wooden shelves. They had the little ladders on the wheels that you slide across to reach the tall books. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? I wonder how many people they had just playing on the ladders. Probably. Actually, <laughs> it was uh, actually people were more serious than I'm not sure if that would have been a thing. Anyway. What we'll do now is we'll move on to part three of this story and that means our going up to where the library is now. So, off to Helcott Place. Right, so we're now currently working our way up New Street. And uh, yeah, so we've just left the what be the previous location of the library before it moved to where it is now. We just got our mod cons with 1932 getting central heating, 1927, so five years, five, six years prior, give or take with the months. Uh, it was also given the benefit of electric lighting, which is probably when that rather lovely looking lamp at the front there became electric and stopped being gas. But on our way to its current position, there's somewhere else we have to visit first. And that's here. St Paul's Gate, I don't know if you can see that on there. The reason we have to visit here is because St Paul's Gate is now currently the uh, home of you know, this is St Paul's Gate now this in 1931 was the home of the first Jersey Children's Library uh, at a time when people still use separate toilets you had would have had the girls toilet here it's labeled girls you can see in the stone main entrance to the library would have been here And then, if you come over this side, you can see there in the stone it says boys. Now the reason it's got two entrances is because, as well as being the children's library, it was also a school. So that's the other reason why it has separate boys and girls toilets, as you can see now surrounded by office blocks 
as is the case with most things everywhere. The side entrance here. You can see again the similarity. You can see here where when it was a school, this would have been a separate entrance just for the, the smaller children, which is why it says infants. And then you would have had the main head office entrance just there where the double doors are. Right, so in case you're wondering what the abrupt cutoff was, I just met a lovely lady. I do apologise and catch your name, but she's the warden for St Paul's Gate. And uh, she asked me what I was doing. I explained to her how we were following the history of the library. And uh, on the way to doing that, I stopped off here to uh, show people where the first children's library used to be. And she's very kindly given me this which is a complete history to St Paul Centre and apparently you can pick these up for free. So if you're interested in the history of St Paul Centre and you want to know more about the children's library, do pop in there. I, uh, I will definitely have a look at this. What I do find interesting, and I haven't had a chance to look inside it properly yet, but what I do find quite interesting is I've noticed on the back, it has a history here of who was in charge of the uh, school when it was a school, which is quite cool. So uh, again, I apologise, I didn't catch your name, but uh, the warden of uh, St Paul's Gate, you're a very nice lady and thank you. Right, so, what are we doing? Oh yeah, to the library. So, in 1989, the library found its final resting place, which was its biggest move, which was from all the way down there, back at the Royal Square where we've just seen, to here. And it's been here ever since. The uh, Children's Library, incidentally, also stayed in the same place until 1989, when it moved from St Paul's Gate and was merged here. So both the Children's and the Adult Library for the first time in the island was in the same place. But this has a hidden secret, because this is clearly a new building. Purpose built to be a library. And as you can probably tell by the one next door, which is quite ornate. Jersey Mechanics Institute building. I'll uh, get your photograph for that, which may come up on screen now and block me completely out of the picture. Um, which was opened in 1902. So if that's as ornate as it got in 1902, this school was here before that, because that's what this was, a school originally. I wonder how pretty it would have been. There is one, one drop of evidence to let you know that this school was here though. So let's go around the back of the library. Right, so we're now at the back of the library, you would not believe how noisy it is back here. There's a big blooming massive crane over there hauling windows and plasterboard and stuff up into a building and 20,000 vans going past with apparently really loud music, which I wouldn't mind if I wasn't trying to bloom in film. Anyway, bless me being grumpy. So we're at the back of the library. This is where originally uh, there was a school, or the main entrance was to a school called Halkett Place School. It originally actually started as a school for the poor infants of the island in 1913. And it was in a, uh, on a street called Grove Place, which I can't seem to find. If I can find where Grove Place is, I'll uh, mark it on a map or something and put it in for you. Uh, and then it was moved to here, into Halkett Place, and it was extended backwards. So it started off on this side in Don Street and extended backwards so it reached the other side where the main entrance to the current library building is now. And that's when the name was changed to Halkett Place School. Uh, the school uh, closed, sadly, in 1982, the year I was born. Uh, so 40 years ago and uh, yeah they then spent they demolished the original building and in 1989 this took its place and the library moved in uh, so there's not an awful lot on this school apart from that apart from one kind of heartwarming thing and that is obviously like I say the school opened in 1913 and people went to war for the First World War at a very, very young age. 
And some of the people who went to war, bearing in mind this was a school for the poor, were from this school. And quite a few of those children who went to war from this school and its previous incarnation in Grove Place died. And in recognition of that, there's this. And it's a memorial that most people probably walk past every day and don't notice. But that's a memorial to every single child who went to Halkett Place School and died in the First World War. Don't think about it. On a slightly more cheery note, as he's about to leave on his moped and I'm trying to get over 27 sounds. <laughs> um, if you were one of the people who went to this school up until 1989, most of the children of which were then moved to Rouge Bullion um, uh, in 1982 when it shut. But uh, if you were one of these children that went here up until 1982, which means you're probably about maybe maybe five to ten years older than me, so anybody who's maybe like about 45, 50 and went to this school, if you do have anything or any memories of the school that you could share with people, that would be interesting to know. I told you the moped was coming. Because uh, there's little to no information on how Cook Place School. There's a little bit, there's not a lot. Um, and especially picture-wise, so anything you could tell us about what it was like, what it looked like, would be quite appreciated. But that, that wraps up the story of the Jersey Library, its current incarnation, its two previous incarnations, and St Halley's Lost School. So with that said, nothing really has for me to do except for ask you to like, share this stuff, and subscribe if you want to. And uh, I'm off this way, kids. Watch where the car park is. Have a nice week, and I'll see you soon.